All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about stadiums that have kind of been forgotten. You know, maybe the pro team moved away. Maybe the pro team got a new stadium, but the facility actually still exists. And with the first four of these, there are still events going on. And then we're going to be talking about two or three that are abandoned and really about to be demolished. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the Alamo Dome which is actually the home of UTSA, the football team, University of Texas San Antonio. They've been pretty good over the past few years being nationally relevant and being ranked inside of the top 25 poll a few different times. But yes, the Alamo Dome was built to you know, be a multi-purpose. And the best example of this is when the Alamo Dome hosted the Final Four, you know, we see pictures of the Final Four and how ridiculous it looks like at U.S. Bank Stadium, at, you know, State Farm Stadium in Arizona, the extra seating, it's so crazy. But with the Alamo Dome, basketball actually looks good, even though it's a stadium that can seat over 60K. Little fun fact about the Alamo Dome, in 2023, or actually in 2022, it had the world record highest attended basketball game when the Spurs went back to the Alamo Dome and played the Warriors, and I believe the attendance was around 68,000, so that was the highest regular season basketball crowd ever. When it goes to baseball, which has only happened a few times, just kind of random spring training games happen, like a two-game series right before the season back in March of 2013 and 2014, the Rangers would play there. The dimensions of it are ridiculous. Down the right field line, it's like 280. And just look at the cluster of seating behind home plate. It's a multi-purpose stadiums are so fun. But yeah, the Alamo Dome has really been never been used to its full potential. You know, it was built possibly to get an NFL team. And it never happened. So it just kind of sits and it's hosted Final Fours. I believe it has another Final Four on the docket in the future that it's going to host. Which you can say what you want. But again, this is really what it was built for. And it has hosted, you know, like XFL games, whatever the kind of knockoff NFL league that's going on at the time. I mean, we've seen various ones since like 2018 and where they will have a team that plays at the Alamo Dome. So it's kind of forgotten about, you know, also the one, I would say maybe the biggest thing that it's known for at this point is the Alamo Bowl. And you know what's weird with the Alamo Bowl? It always seems like Oregon is in it. I don't know why, but like Oregon's been in like three out of the past four, I feel like. Maybe I'm just making that up and I remember... You remember Oregon maybe faced TCU in it and there was a major comeback by TCU? I don't know, maybe I'm remembering that wrong, but... Yeah, the Alamo Bowl happens every year here. It is kind of one of the upscale bowls that's of the college football season that's not a New Year's Six Bowl. So that's probably what it's most known for or hosting Final Four games. It was the home for the San Antonio Spurs, but they got a, you know, a new arena. And, you know, with its seating capacity, it's not a legitimate option to be a home of an NBA team at this point or really at any point. The next one we're going to be looking at is the Edward Jones Dome, which has now been changed to the Dome at America's Center, which used to be the home of the St. Louis Rams. Of course, they moved to LA, but not without a fight. Before talking about the stadium, I want to go over... I never realized this. There was actually a rendering to renovate the Edward Jones Dome and kind of put like a little slit in the side of it to open it up and to allow natural light in. And I didn't even know that was a thing. And then it got so far in St. Louis, they had the actual stadium rendering to build a new stadium because at that point, you know, back in 2011, 2012, it was dicey for St. Louis to keep a football team. And it got so far to where they actually sold the naming rights of the stadium. It was going to be called Rental Car Field. It was already sold. And the stadium was right next to water. And I got to say, it kind of looks like Lincoln Financial Field. That's what it reminds me of. That over, If you guys know the Philadelphia Eagles Stadium, that's what that rendering reminds me of. Of course, it doesn't happen. 
it, you know, the Rams end up going to LA. They they play in the Coliseum for a few years, and now SoFi is open, and, and the rest is history. But when it comes to the Dome at America Center, it is just kind of hosting various events. It's really not doing a whole lot. At this point, it opened 27 years ago in 1995 and quickly became obsolete like, like most domes. They do actually have the St. Louis Battlehawks, the XFL team. They have their home games here in 2023. They also hosted their home games in 2020. Uh, but it just has a few various random events. It did have a Final Four, but it's, it's certainly not going to have a Final Four in the future. And it is just kind of an obsolete dome at this point. Reminds me a little bit of the Metrodome in Minnesota, although I will say it does feel a little bit taller than the Metro Dome did. Either way, the Edward Jones Dome or just the Dome, whatever you want to call it, at this point, you know, it's not doing much. They do have a college football game coming up this year, September 23rd, 2023. It's going to be Missouri taking on Memphis. And I, I saw that game on the schedule and it said, you know, it, it's taking place at the Dome. And I'm like, where is that? Well, here it is. I didn't even, if you would have asked me like what's going on with the Edward Jones Dome a year ago, I would say that thing's blown to smithereens. They That thing got demolished, I'm sure. But you know what? It's still kicking. You got to respect it. And look out for that neutral site game. The Missouri game versus, I guess it's really not neutral site. It's kind of like a home game for Missouri. But uh, that is going to be taking place probably, what is September 23rd, like week four of college football this year? Probably somewhere around there, like week four. That should be good. The next one I want to talk about, and this is another one that I thought would be demolished, but it's still kicking, and it's still hosting various concerts, it is Oracle Arena. You want to talk about a place that's seen a lot of winning, <laughs> especially late in its life. I mean, Oracle had so many, like, so many finals, so many big playoff games, but just looking at this thing, especially the exterior... I mean, it just feels like it probably should be demolished. It's kind of funny how Oracle is next to the Coliseum. It's just too obsolete. You know, one of them's a basketball arena. The other one's a multi-purpose football, baseball. And they're just completely obsolete. But I thought they took a bulldozer to this thing. But it is still kicking. And I actually went on the events page. It's one of the, the best things. They were showing events for the Coliseum and for Oracle. And you could go to either one. And it's like, man, which one do you choose? These, these are great establishments. <laughs> these are beautiful places. But no, Oracle was legendary, man. I, I don't want to hate on it. But just looking at the exterior of it now, it's just severely dated. And really, at this point, it just hosts different concerts, different magic shows, comedy acts, things like that. You know, I would think it'd be kind of fun to maybe utilize Oracle and the and how, you know, fun it used to be. Maybe have like a neutral site college basketball game between two big like UCLA versus, you know, Baylor or UCLA versus, I don't know, Gonzaga. I mean, I know that game just happened in March Madness, but still just kind of a, just a fun game West Coast and have it there in a neutral site facility. I think that'd be pretty cool. Also, I believe it got new seats, although I could be wrong on that, but I did see a photo of it that I think was recently, and it looked like it had different seats. And then these two kind of go together. It is Turner Field, the former home of the Atlanta Braves, and Texas Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. Both of these have become uh, kind of transformed Against their will, I would say. They're not meant to be, you know, multi-purpose stadiums that turn to football. But both of these had a very short lifespan. When you talk about Turner Field lasting around 20 years, Rangers Ballpark is as old. Or I think it, 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 it might be a little bit younger than Oriole Park at Camden Yards. And it's the same age as Progressive Field. And both of them at this point, no MLB team. The Rangers had to move. They needed a retractable roof because the summer days were too hot. And, you know, it was either build a retractable roof over the stadium or just get a brand new stadium. And they chose a new stadium. And then Turner Field was never going to last because it was originally, not that it was designed for the Olympics, but it was built with the Olympics in mind. So there was very limited things you could do. It's kind of like Oklahoma City and their current situation with their basketball arena. They're trying to get a new arena because 
when they got the Thunder back, the arena that they moved into was a real bare-bone thing. It was not a state-of-the-art NBA arena. It was just something that was supposed to host events, and it had to become the home for the Thunder because Oklahoma City got the Thunder, and it was the only place. But now people are realizing how obsolete it is. It's kind of these situations where, you know, teams leave or the Olympics comes, just kind of a weird thing. That's why Turner Field had such a short lifespan because it was pretty bare bones. And not that it was a horrible ballpark. I don't think it was ever bottom five, but it was never like top 10. You know, that's kind of how I view Turner Field and its legacy. But you can see, I mean, the rendering, uh, that's an amazing rendering. I can guarantee you there has never once been that many fans at a Georgia State game at Turner Field. Never once. But that's why I love renderings because they always show, you know, it's full. They've actually gone to tarping off the upper deck at Turner Field during those Georgia State games. And I do think Turner Field kind of fits football more than Rangers ballpark at Arlington because Rangers ballpark is has way more seating and it's kind of it's just kind of weird looking at the configuration of it Turner Field is a, is a smaller footprint so it can easier kind of it can so it can more easily kind of transform into a football stadium but both of those really you know it, it's kind of sad honestly looking when it when something like that happens and then two that are about to be demolished the first one is the Alamo Dome which is completely gutted the story of the Alamo Dome at the the story of the Alamo Dome at this point the most recent update I saw was they wanted to turn it into a parking garage but they couldn't do it it broke like numerous fire codes apparently back in 2008 and ever since then it's just been abandoned it got again it got gutted there are no seats remaining in the Alamo Dome it is literally just a cement block waiting to be demolished and then one stadium that's in the process of being demolished right now I'm shocked this is even still out there it is RFK Stadium and this is one of the cookie cutters that somehow is still standing but Hold that, hold that thought because I saw an article back in January two months ago that the demolition process on the stadium was beginning. So that is being demolished as we speak. They are currently gutting that. Again, I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. All those, you know, cookie cutter, concrete, donut stadiums got just trounced in the 90s. That Once they moved out, they, they would go. But that was still standing at least until now. So guys, those are just some different stadiums slash arenas that are kind of forgotten about, but they are still standing and some of them are hosting events in 2023. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.